Hey, crew. Wow, this this vlog isn't starting very well, is it? Okay, so I hope I haven't got any carrot in my teeth. Probably have. Ignore that. <sighs> Up there with the most asked questions when people uh, when you um, people realise you live on a boat. One, is it warm? Time it is. We got new heating, and we've got coal cage. Both links there. Other thing, condensation. I think anybody who is living in a small space um, can sympathize, even a house, you get condensation in a house. We did cover this in one of our most successful vlogs as the Narrowboat Chronicles back in the day, which is probably about three years ago now. Um, so we're gonna, we're gonna do it again now, but we're gonna update it ever so slightly because one of the biggest things that people talked about or at the time suggested that we needed was these. So that is a moisture trap. So first on the list of how we combat condensation is moisture traps. So we've got one under the bed, one in the enclosed wardrobe, and we are going to get a couple more. Because um, they're very good just to keep in sealed areas, so like the cupboards and stuff. Um, so yeah, we need probably one under the sink, one under the cupboard in here. Um, the bathroom's alright because it's a calorifier. So number two is a little less impractical. So number two is uh, our 240 volt dehumidifier. So obviously it's not um, the greatest thing if you are a liverboard and you're not hooked up to electricity as we are here in the marina. Um, we don't often use it, we don't use it daily. Like when we're doing things like this and the bed's up, we'll put it in there just to like, you know, get rid of any moisture that is around. Um, but when the engine bay was flooded uh, here, we once got it all mopped up and all as dry as we possibly could, we left this baby down there for a day running just to you know, suck out that extra moisture, it's perfect for that. It's brilliant for combating condensation. Moisture, really. I'm not talking about just condensation, what you find on your windows, I'm talking about moisture. Um, so yeah, we'll, uh, we'll put this back in our bed hollow, because um, it'll be about another 15 minutes before we're ready to put everything back in the bed. And it's perfect. So yeah, a dehumidifier, I think if you are hooked up to electricity or you're traveling a lot and you can put it on when you you know the engines um charging your batteries then it's a pretty awesome bit of kit. So yeah. Two on the list is dehumidifier. So number 3 is our double glazed windows. So as you can see there is moisture transfer from the actual frame. So the frame is still, needs a wipe down probably two, three times a day, especially when it's cold outside as it is today. And it's, um, somebody's here, it's warm inside, that transfer always happens. So yeah, need to wipe the frames down a couple of times a day. But the actual pain, doesn't tend to steam up unless we're cooking. So in that respect, they're awesome. Because when we had single panes that um, often be steamed or partly steamed. Um, so yeah, we're really happy with our double glazing. It's made, it does make a difference. And other than the actual steaming up aspect, 
for um, insulation, steaming up, and sound. Well worth the investment. So number four, number four in our fight against um, moisture, we have um, little, well, they're not little, about six inch computer fans um, in the mushroom vents. So they're basically just flick them on and off and they are sucking air out into the mushroom on the roof. Um, so they're really good if you're having a shower or something, just to help with that, getting rid of the extra moisture. In the future, what I'd really love to do is put a proper, um, like, van fan. Van fan? Like a proper van fan, extraction fan, on the roof. Um, might need like a little glue or something welding on. But I'm thinking about that. Because I think that would be awesome for in the summer. Because I think nowadays they can have them set to either sucking air in or blowing air out. And that would be ideal in a boat. Because obviously when it gets really hot in summer, you can have it sucking out. So pulling air, cold air, air in. And then when you're cooking, you can suck it out. Or if you just want ventilation, you can then suck it in. Imagine that, it'd be ace. So that's something we're gonna look at, um, not next year, probably the year after, when we're hopefully gonna be looking at going continuous cruising. But yeah, if anybody's got that on their boat, put it in the comments. I'd really like to hear from you and whether you think that's um, either viable or why don't people do it? I think that's my biggest question. Why don't people do that? It makes sort of perfect sense. But anyway, yeah, that's my question for you guys. Why don't people do that? So anyway, that's four ceiling vent fans, but they're only computer fans, they're not great fans. We want a great fan. Anyway, enough of fans, it's four. Let's go on to number five. So to talk about number five, I first need to make myself a coffee. Then we need to prep. Then we need to prep our potatoes and carrots for our Sunday roast today. But the important thing that I've got to show you is our new instant pot. Check this out. So why am I including that instant point? Instant pot in our fight against um, humidity and moisture is because it acts, one of its features, and it has many, and I've only just scratched the surface, it's basically a rice cooker, pressure cooker, um, soup maker, stew maker, slow cooker, um, you can saute in it, you can do porridge, you can steam things, it's just awesome bit of kit and it was a very special gift from our friend Emma bless you Emma you were right we're using it a lot even if it's just for the rice but anyway why it's in this video is because it can cook without letting off any steam so when we're usually boiling um, potatoes or vegetables or cooking a stew or something it generates a lot of moisture and just steams us up. Um, obviously in summer that's great, no problem, because you can open all the windows and everything, but in winter, when you hunker down on a cold, rainy, miserable night, last thing you need is to be opening the windows. Yeah, so, so we'll, we'll come back to this once my potatoes and carrots have been sauteed. So I'm using a pressure cooker, I've turned the time down, 
because it, it cooks really quick as well. So even though it is on 240 volt, that's probably the only downside. Um, I think the speed in which it cooks is probably outweighs the, yeah, I mean, that would be something that you'd have to investigate yourself, I'm afraid. Um, I'm not very good with figures like that. You know, what amp hour things it uses. Um, but I am telling you, it is amazing. It is awesome bit of kit for living in, on a boat. But you can actually just let it cook and then it'll cool down and it'll the, condense that moisture. So you don't even have to release the pressure or anything, just let it cool down. So if you're thinking ahead, you know, if you're cruising and you're looking at tea, just brilliant for that. So yeah, combating moisture is our instant pot. Excuse me. Instant pot, which doesn't release any steam. How awesome is that? Number five on the list, uh, instant pot. Thanks, Emma. So that was that little bit of steam. Obviously it's reached pressure. This little silver um, button pops up. So I've just turned it off because I'm only parboiling um, the spuds and things for roasting. So I've turned it off and I'm gonna wait until that silver button goes back inside and that means then that the pressure's gone inside the pot. So we just gotta hang tight. Don't move it like that. So there you go. Hardly any steam. Cook perfectly. Ideal. So another easy practical way that we've um, helping to reduce the moisture, damp, um, mold. Ventilation holes. So we've done all those areas that are like underneath the bed and stuff. We've increased the ventilation. So we, there is a flow of air and it's not ideal. Um, second to that, we're gonna then put some rails on the floor to keep everything actually off direct contact with the floor. So that'll allow air to get through. Um, something we're gonna expand on we're going to get some ventilation in through the cupboard, then in through the wardrobe, everywhere that you know doesn't tend to get a lot of air. It can be can be done easily, so that's something we're going to do. But yeah, increase your ventilation as much as possible, whether it's through fans, vents, anything really. Just more air circulating, the better. So there are only two things left on that super duper list of things that we use to counter moisture, damp and mold. So it's this. So it's like a, um, it's like a spring material that's two layers with like pockets in the middle so you're creating like a layer of um a layer that air can travel through basically which is what you need to avoid build up of damp moisture and then mold because nobody wants mold under the bed so that in conjunction with the holes that we've cut keeps a nice airflow um since we've had it when we first moved on the boat, we didn't have anything under the mattress, being the young, naive, foolish things that we were. Um, and within probably three months, we had a little patch of mold growing. Um, you know, ideally at some point we like to grow our own mushrooms, but we certainly didn't like growing our own mold. Um, and after a little bit of research on tinted webs, this is what we found. Um, I'll put a link to every item that we've that I've mentioned in the description below. Some of them may be affiliate links, which means if you click on them and buy something, we get like the tiniest little portion to help with our journey. So just so you're aware. Now the final one is the most exciting one because 
It's a bit of a toy. So let's go grab that. Thought there's something wrong with the camera then. It's the old instant pot. See, we do actually use it. That was genuine. That was, uh, this is another day. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I've just done some sweet potatoes to have with the chili. Can you see any steam? No. Anyway. Yeah. It's our Karcher electric. Window Hoover. I'm not sure if that has got a proper name, actually. If it has, that's what the link will say. So you don't think I'm totally thick. So yeah, um, this is awesome. We use this in the boat, obviously. Not so much as we used to, um, refer to the window section of this video. Um, but we also use it in the van and it's invaluable in the van. Because when all three of us are sleeping in there and it's all um, gets a bit moist, doesn't it? Moist. Um, yeah, it's great for doing the windscreen in the mornings because the, the heating in the van isn't the best. Gotta be honest. So yeah, Karcher Window Vac, as seen at the start of this video. And so it's rechargeable. Uh, we'll see my own probably um, batteries. I charged this it's probably two years ago bought this. Charged it two years ago, used it in the van, used it in the boat, still haven't recharged it. So that's points to two things. How good the battery is in it and how good the double glazing is in the boat. So that is it friends. They're all things that we use to counter moisture buildup in our tiny home. Um, I hope you found it interesting. A bit more of an update. And that's it for this week. I'm just going to give you a little sneak peek into what's coming over the next couple of weeks. Because we are doing an art challenge. Oh. Oh yes, sir, Bob. We're doing a, let me just get into some light. We're doing a Roses and Castles um, competition. So, me versus Shell. I'm doing a watering can, and Shell's either doing a bucket, or a coal skull. Depends um, if the bucket gets here on time. So yeah. Stay tuned for that in the next couple of weeks. And until then, hope oh you're yeah, enjoying the start of the Christmas festivities. Gotta be honest, Asda are doing a Bailey's Almond um, Cream Liqueur, which is a vegan Bailey's. And we actually prefer it to the old Bailey's. Well, the old Bailey's is a bit cloying. The Almond one is just lighter and it's beautiful. Beautiful. And Asda are doing it for four pound a bottle. So yeah, get your little vegan asses down to Asda and clear the shelves, brothers and sisters, clear the shelves. Um, so yeah, until then, until next week's art challenge, thanks very much for watching. If you haven't already, and you like to nosy poke at our life on a narrow boat on the UK Canal Network, then please subscribe. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If there's somebody you think might need to see this who is struggling with moisture and mold damp in their tiny space, then yeah, let them know, share it, and we will love you. Stay afloat and love yourself. Until next week. Ciao.